Welcome to CAT Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 7.3. If you guys haven't subscribed, please just hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you get updates when I upload. So now, this is from the fifth edition of the textbook, and we are asked to find i as well as vx, right? We have a dependent source here. As we know by now, that we have quite a few steps to solve these kind of problems. The first or one of them being to find RTH with respect to the storage element. So these two are resistors and we, this is also a resistor and we only have one storage element in this case, which is an inductor. So we have to find RTH with respect to this inductor. We have to find the time constant and we also need to know the initial condition. So given the initial condition in our question, so you don't really have to find that. All we have to do now is to find RTH with respect to the storage element as well as the time constant. So let's do that quickly. As I said, we have a dependent source in here. And as you know by now, from chapter four, we, we introduce a test source. Now that we're finding RTH with respect to this, we actually take this out. We're actually looking at RTH from this point. So it's like we took this out. Now at that point, we took that out. It's similar to just having an open circuit or whatever you want to call it, since we are actually finding RTH with respect to that point. So now at that point or that open circuit which we have, we're going to introduce a test source of one volt, right? as well as a current going up of IO. And this IO and one volt is gonna help us find our RTH because we have a, a dependent source in here and therefore we have to introduce this for some external excitation. So this is what is gonna happen. We have RTH is equal to one, which is the test source value divided by our IO, which you're gonna find. So this is our new circuit. We are interested in finding RTH at this point. This is what we have after introducing the test source. Okay. So now from here, we have to proceed to find our IO and our IO is gonna give us our RTH, which we're interested in finding, sorry. So here we can just name this as V. Let's just name it as V. V is the first letter of my name. That's quite interesting. So that's V. Also here we have VX that's given to us in the question. That doesn't change. So let's form a relationship between the one volt, the VX and the V. So if you look at this point, at this point you have one volt, right? At this point you have V. Now VX, the positive is on this side. So we move from the positive to the negative by saying one subtract V. So this node subtract that node, which is one subtract V is equals to whatever we have in between as voltage is potential difference, the difference between two points. So one subtract V gives us VX. So that is the relationship between the one, the V and the VX. So that this is going to come in handy later at some point just now. So now let's do node analysis at this point as it's going to help us to ultimately find our IO. So you're gonna say at this point, we're gonna say V subtract one divided by one, this one over here. Then we're gonna say V subtract two VX plus V subtract two VX divided by two, which is the current which goes down here. And finally, you're gonna have V divided by six, which is the current which goes down there. So plus V divided by six is equal to zero. So now just multiply through by six, we're gonna have six V subtract six plus three V subtract six VX plus V is equal to zero. Now using this relationship, we're gonna substitute one subtract V wherever we see VX. So here is the point where we see our VX. So let's first add our Vs so that it's much more convenient. So this is six V, this is three V, that's nine. Added to that, 10 V, so 10 V. And we're going to take this to the other side of the equal sign. We don't really have to, but let's do it just for now. Take this to the other side of the equal sign, this. So that's the only constant which we have here. And we added up every V which we found inside. 
all that's left is this part here so negative 6 and then substitute this which is 1 subtract v wherever we see our vx so that is that we're going to multiply through and simplify this we're going to have negative 6 plus 6v is equal to 6 and at this point we're going to have 10v plus 6v which is 16v taking this to the other side of the equal sign we're going to have 12 so v is equal to 12 divided by 16 you could do some math around this you can do it manually you just punch it into your calculator and if you do that if you punch this into your calculator you should get 0 0.75 now this v is going to help us find our vx which is up here and this vx is going to help us find our io but you don't really have to do that if you just look at here we have io indicated as growing from this side into that node or we can say that one subtract v so one subtract v which is vx divided by one which is the current going through there so io is equal to one subtract v divided by one which is the same as one subtract v so what is the value of v we found v to be 0 0.75 so you can say io is equal to one subtract 0 0.75 and the answer to that is simply 0 0.25 five amperes so this is the value of our io and our io is going to help us find our rth so now let's substitute our io into this point we're going to have one divided by 0 0.25 which is four so rth is equal to four ohms so that is our rth so we can take that point off now this rth is going to help us find our last thing which you're interested in which is our time constant so the time constant for an an LR circuit or a circuit which consists of an inductance as well as resistors. This is how you find the time constant. So tau, which is the time constant, is equal to L divided by R. So the value of the inductor given to us in the question is two Henry's. So substitute that two over here. So we have two over there, and we substitute our RTH at the bottom. Our RTH we found to be four, right? Which means our time constant is 0 0.5 seconds. Now, we come to the final point of combining the equation. So the equation I of T is equal to I, the initial condition, E to the power of negative T divided by the time constant in amperes. So now we substitute whatever we have. We're given the initial condition in the question as 12 amperes. So we have 12 over here. Then we have E to the power of negative T at the time constant is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 amperes now simplifying this or writing it in a better way we're gonna have 12 e so 1 divided by 0 0.5 which is basically 2 e to the uh, minus 2 amperes so that is how you find your your i of t which is the first part of the question right so your i of t is equal to 12 e to the minus 2 amperes but that's not all in the question the question asks for i as well as vx and we said that one subtract v is equal to vx which is going to help us in a way or if you can just look at the position of vx here in the original equation let's combine these two or let's form a relationship between these two it goes in that direction so it encounters the negative of vx first so we're going to say negative vx is equal to this resistance here multiplied by the current so using ohm's law which says v is equal to ir but this negative is introduced because the i passes through the negative terminal first so negative vx is equal to i which is our i which we're interested in and r is going to be this resistor over here which is one so to ultimately find vx we're going to say vx is equal to negative i because one multiplied by i is just i so dividing by negative on both sides, we're going to have negative i. And we found our i to be 12e to the minus 2t, right? So just basically negate this to find our vx. So vx is essentially negative 12e to the minus 2t volts.